Hey friends, welcome to today's video where I attempt to vibe code an entire project management app using Power Apps Code Apps along with GitHub Copilot. If you've never met Code Apps before, imagine pro grade React apps, but safely locked inside Power Apps so your IT governance team doesn't catch fire or chase you with pitchforks. And vibe coding, well, it's basically pair programming, remember that? but with the OG co-pilot doing all the coding for us. And there it is, just vibrating with excitement, just ready for 10x productivity. What's that I hear you ask? Well, at the recent European Power Platform Conference, Ryan Cunningham challenged us to go from 10% thinking to 10 times AI first thinking. So obviously I decided to see if I could do literally everything with Copilot. Today's experiment is to build a slick project management app with a shiny Gantt chart. But is it really 10x more productive? Stick around because you're about to witness a glorious mix of genius, chaos, and what I'm going to generously call learning opportunities. But let's get serious for a second. Building in low code feels so good until you try to do something like, I don't know, uh, Gantt chart, for example. So sure, you could go all Fusion Dev and build a PCF component too much pro code onto low code, the whole value proposition starts to evaporate. Ironically, the stuff low code is fantastically good at, forms, galleries, grids, it turns out are easy to build with pro code and GitHub Copilot. But wait, Power Platform still matters. Whilst we've been making business apps, the Power Platform team has spent literally decades getting really good at the stuff that actually matters. Security, monitoring, deployment, governance, and the best part is the safety net isn't just for us humans. It's perfect for AI agents too. So let's see how this actually works in practice with code apps. Is it all hype or is it 10X? Start the clocks, please. Ready, Copilot? fist bump. Don't leave me hanging. Okay, that's awkward. Before diving headfirst into the chaos, let's prep. This is where the copilot instructions.md file is invaluable. Think of it like a laminated cheat sheet for copilot so it doesn't spontaneously decide to use some random JavaScript from 2008. I stuffed this file with everything, coding best practices, instructions on configuring Vite, installing Fluent UI version nine, and especially on how to use data grids, performance best practices as well, and how to set up code apps using pack code in it and how to deploy things once we're done. Trust me, a little upfront instruction here saves hours later on. Don't ask me how I know. You can grab my sample instructions file using the link in the description below. But naturally, to get 10x productivity, I ask Copilot to write my user stories for me and then save them as requirements.md. We do have to be a little bit careful not to outsource too much of this critical thinking though. But once I picked agent mode, I had new superpowers unlocked. I selected Claude Sonnet 4, which works really great for complex coding tasks. I asked, look at the requirements and create me an implementations plan. Let me check before you start building. Copilot got busy and in minutes, handed me a full implementation plan, complete with the technical stack based on code apps, of course, a database design and step-by-step -step build plan. It's kind of like plan designer in Power Apps, except for more hacking the matrix. Just for fun, I asked it to generate a mermaid diagram of the data model. And just like that, I had an ERD visualization of the tables. I could have iterated on this a bit, but I decided to, well, trust the vibes. All right, main event time. I told Copilot, okay, go ahead and build up to phase two. Use minimal terminal commands. Good luck. And off it went, reading my instructions, cross-referencing the requirements file, and basically acting like the most optimistic developer you've ever met. It did ask for my permission to run commands, however, and I made some tweaks such as asking it to name the app Project Hub. Then it was off installing dependencies and rating every step in that overly chipper tone of voice it has, and I left it alone, occasionally checking in to make sure it wasn't sitting quietly, waiting for some more permissions. So cue music for epic build sequence.
Once Copilot proudly announced it was done, I typed NPN run dev as instructed. I was so optimistic. You'll quickly learn to test and then to let it know of any errors or issues you see and then iterate from there. So I copied the error message and deployed my best ever prompting skills with a fix this error prompt. I can see the issue it says and then it finished up with great, I fixed the issue, but I did need a few more rounds of my fix this prompt. But gradually our app came to life with fluent style a hamburger menu, forms over data, just like that, even responsive tables with fancy column formatting. The data grid columns weren't resizable initially, which I'll forgive given how great everything else was, so time to deploy the hash fetch tool, which gives Copilot the ability to read external websites. I told it to fetch the guidelines and sample code from the Fluent V9 website. It asked me for permission to fetch the external site. Fun fact, there's a whole discussion about whether there should be a feature to allow terminal commands to be run without consent, what could possibly go wrong? So there I was merrily using the most recent Claude Sonnet model, but it did seem to have more restrictive usage limits. And so I was rate limited. Time to downgrade to Claude Sonnet 3.7 mode, which was still pretty good as it turns out. Off it went, picking up right from where it left off. Let's fast forward a little bit. Well, it almost worked. There was an odd issue where the column headers wouldn't resize, but the columns would. Double check the reference code I told it, and in true dev manager style, I threw it some random code for it to figure it out. This is where the iterative process really kicks in. You test something, give it feedback, rinse and repeat. It takes a little bit of patience, but just like any software development. Okay, that's now working. One of the things Power Apps gives you for free, and it's important not to forget all the advantages of low code, is accessibility. We did need to remind it that sorting doesn't work with the keyboard. And off it goes like an eager puppy fetching a stick. And as a result, I can now sort the table using the keyboard and resize the columns using the arrow keys. So cool. Now I started to push my luck and asked it to add in a progress bar for the complete percentage column. Perfect, I can see the progress column is currently just using text, it said. And in fact, it not only added it to the project table, but it also added it to the task table. Now that's what I call a proactive self-starter. We all need dark mode, of course, so I asked it to add a dark light theme switcher. One of the cool features of agent mode is it examines the code as it's written as it goes along, and it'll often say, let me fix this error I found. Occasionally it decides that the file is completely corrupted and it will revert to a previous version from your source control. So commit often, especially because sometimes it goes off road and gets a little creative. Great, voila, dark mode, so pretty. It works across the whole of the UI because it's using Fluent's theming mechanisms, but next up is paging support for our data grids. The Fluent data grids don't have a built-in paging mechanism, and I could have been more prescriptive in my Copilot instructions, but I asked it to add at least five pages of sample data and make sure that the data grids can be paged correctly. This is still using mock data at this point, of course, but because I asked it to create a service provider mechanism, it'll be easy to swap out with my Azure SQL support when I'm ready. It added that in and gave me some sample data to do the paging with. I could probably go to town with more prompting to tidy things up a bit more, but let's move on for now. Another thing that Power Apps gives us, especially model-driven apps, is a nice lookup field control for related records. So far here, it had built using just dropdowns. It took the easiest approach like any self-respecting dev. So I asked, update the client fields to be a search combo. Look, it worked in both search and on the edit forms. Now for the fun part. I told GitHub Copilot we are now ready to add a Gantt chart. I'd already found a really good Gantt chart component online. I deployed the fetch tool again to ask it how to learn to use it. For things like this, it's a good idea to do a little bit of research. It had already suggested something, but I wanted something different, so it installed the one I asked for and removed the one that it had picked before. Then it got busy with implementing the Gantt chart. And first try, well, not so good, but I got to deploy my fix this error prompt again, quite a few more times if I'm honest, and suddenly there it was, a Gantt chart with dummy data. But it wasn't working in dark mode because it's not a fluent component component, of course. A little more research, finding the right code to use and deploying the fetch tool once more. And lo and behold, dark mode bask in its reflective glory. There was a few problems getting it to bind to the mock data service, but after a few rounds of this didn't work, try again, it came up with a spectacular assessment. Wait, I think I'm overcomplicating things. And suddenly GitHub Copilot was in an existential crisis. Let me step back and think about the core problem, it said. Very profound. But after a few rounds of back and forth, 
forth, it turned out that this revelation wasn't quite the breakthrough that Copilot had hoped for, and I had to step in like a senior developer. I did a little bit of debugging in the browser to see what was going on, and the most painful part of this was actually having to look at the code and understand it for the first time, like a uh, kind of a code review. But honestly, I was impressed by how easy it was to follow. It wasn't half bad. I applied the fix and justified my very existence, but up until now, the Gantt chart was only on the task page, which would show all the tasks and not just for a specific project. So I asked, I want a Gantt chart view for a specific project that can be open from the project grid. I told it to do some deep thinking, not my best prompt, I agree. It worked first time. For sorting, I asked it for the best technique and it suggested a gap-based approach where the sort numbers are intervals of a thousand. But up until this point, we had been running everything locally. Now it was time to use the pack code command to start a local server that code app gives us. And this is where it gets so cool. The server gives us an endpoint on port 8080, which provides power apps with the metadata about the local code app. And it gives you a link to run the code app inside power apps. So you can see that the app is running right inside powerapps.com and the local host URLs are passed on the query string. The network trace here shows that the local files are being requested and then rendered inside power apps. This allows us to develop locally, but run remotely. When I make a change locally, it refreshes the browser to then use the latest changes. At this stage in the build, this doesn't quite give us anything extra until we've wired up to the data sources, but let's celebrate these victories anyway. I tried to build the app ready to push it into Power Apps so I could run without local host, but as expected, there were a ton of TypeScript errors that Copilot hadn't picked up on. It didn't stop the app from working locally, but they did need to be fixed to pass the linting and type checking rules to build and deploy. One more fix this prompt later and the errors were, well, fixed. Then I could run pack code push. The built distributables were picked up and deployed into Power Apps. Eventually, this means that the app will be able to be deployed as part of a Power Platform solution alongside all the other cool stuff. A code app appears as a new type of Power App and I can play it as I would do any other app, looking super cool so far. But now it's time to wire up to real data. I didn't have any SQL database tables or store procedures yet, so using my PS to the resistance of prompts, I asked Copilot to create tables and store procedures under the Project Hub schema that would give me all the functionality that the mock data access service already gave us. And acting as the most friendly DBA you'll ever meet, it gave me a script that I ran using SQL extensions in VS Code, and it worked first time. Look at all those store procedures. Next, I need some test data similar to the mock data, and suddenly I had another script ready to be run, and it inserted loads of sample rows. Before I could wire up code apps to the database, I needed to first create connections in my Power Platform environment. This is where code apps really shine. I get all the security and governance of Power Platform without storing any credentials locally. And whilst I was there, I also added an Office 365 connector, both using OAuth. And because my Copilot instructions file detailed it exactly how to add connections to the code app, I asked, help me add the data sources to my project. Just like that, it created me a PowerShell script with all the pack code add data source commands in the correct format using the database server that I provided. The proxy classes that were created to call my store procedures made it real easy for Copilot to discover how to invoke them. You know, without ending up with any plain text files or passwords locally. I also asked it to use the Office 365 connector to retrieve my user and profile picture and show it in an Office 365 style navbar. When you first open the code app after adding connections, you get the trusty consent dialog, just like you would with Canvas apps. And behold, there was my name and profile picture. So close. I asked, use the store procedures to create a real implementation of the data access instead of the mock service. And off it went, reading all all the code generated by pack code add data source with all the correct data types. It could easily incorporate this into the service factory, meaning I could then switch between mock and real data. So let's do a final build and push before the big unveiling. And there it was in all its glory, Project Hub with Gantt charts, responsive, accessible, and fast to load and run. To show it was all working, I ran a quick SQL query against my task table, edit a task, 
inside Project Hub and then queried the results to confirm it was updated. Of course, Copilot helpfully added full logging as well so I could see what was happening in the console. The ordering and reparenting of tasks also worked perfectly and the dashboard was really pretty, pulling data directly from a dashboard saw procedure, all delegated to the server just like it should do. And to top it off, it worked inside the Power Apps mobile app too, all touch friendly with flyout menus, etc. The fancy dashboard looking cool and dark mode. Edit forms that work well on the mobile phone. This is where using Fluent V9 really shines because it works both on desktop and mobile devices. This is a screen recording from my iPhone and although I wouldn't want to edit Gantt charts on my mobile, maybe on a tablet of course, you have to admit it does look kind of cool. So what did we learn? Always use a comprehensive Copilot instructions files. Give as much instructions as you can. And create a requirements file for Copilot to follow. Plan your data structures with Copilot's help up front if you can, there'll be a lot less thrashing around later on. Use fetch to give examples of working code from the web where you can, and frequent git commits are an absolute lifesaver when things don't quite go to plan. You can get started for free with GitHub Copilot, and until code apps are in public preview, why not sign up for the early access program using the link below. Also check out the code apps GitHub repo for full instructions on how to build with code apps. It's got loads of sample code and instructions. So despite the chaos, we built something that's actually useful. And look at that time. Is it 10x though? This is not your classic low code. You get all the power of pro code and all the governance that Power Platform can throw at you. Thanks for sticking with me through this adventure. Next time, I'm going to vibe code with generative pages in model-driven apps. So until then, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>